There once was a time that I didn't shine so bright, a time when there was darkness before I found my light. I had so much pain that I needed to release, became a version of myself which made me feel displeased. And so I turned to books to help me through my trauma, down the rabbit hole that led me to my dharma. What on earth is dharma? The Buddhist word for truth. Faith of any kind will fast track you to growth. Now my message is compassion, to spread love and be kind. Now that's a kind of destiny to which I am aligned. I now feel connected, I've learned how to forgive. There's no doubt in my mind that's a better way to live. In my quest for evolution, each book upon my shelf is one piece of the puzzle to the best version of myself. Hi my lovely YouTube friends, Gypsy here. I'm here for my first book review. So um, a lot of you have shown interest and excitement about me sharing what I've been reading. And I realize that this is, a, it's primarily a crochet channel, so it's not, um, it's not for everybody. And that's fine. If it's not for you, I will catch you in the next one. But I do, um, most of what I read is uh, nonfiction. I find everything I read is for my own, either spiritual or personal development or where I'm at in my life, whatever I need, I find that gaining wisdom through books is an incredible way to get other people's perspective. And it's helped me along my journey. It's been a really big part of uh, developing who I've become. So I wanted to share these books with you. I'll probably be doing a review about once a month. I usually listen to audio books. Um, so, but this time, uh, the first one's a physical book. So the first book that I'm going to be reviewing is called The Grief Recovery Handbook, and it's by John W. James and Russell Friedman. So it's this one. Um, I tried to get this on Audible and it's not available on Audible and it was only available on Amazon. I realize that I really feel like, um... Books come to me at the right time, exactly when I need them. And this book kept coming up and coming up. People kept mentioning it to me. As you may know, I recently lost my father. And, you know, people kept suggesting it. And I couldn't get it on Audible, which normally I would just say, well, I can't get it. I did look it up. Now, it's not available on the Australian Amazon, but it is on the US Amazon site. And so then I would have to pay shipping. And I just, I thought, oh, I'm just going to put it off for now and I'll get back to it later. The very next day, I actually won uh, a com competition by Cindy Hart's Crochet. She was having a competition, a subscriber, I think it was a subscriber competition. And the prize was a $20 Amazon gift card, which was enough to cover this book and the shipping to Australia. And that was the very next day after I had decided that it was just going to be too hard. So I knew that I had to get this book. So thank you very much, Cindy. This is uh, where that Amazon gift card went. Um, yeah, so let me get into the re review. So basically, this book is a workbook to recovery from grief. So the first half of this book talks about grief and all of the things associated with grief. And then the second half of the book is more like a workbook and it actually gives you practical examples of things and tasks to complete in order to move and work through your recovery, which is fantastic, I thought, because when you're in a state of grief, you just want somebody to tell you what to do to make the yucky feelings go away. And I found that this book was very appealing to me because I'm a very, I'm an action person. Um, I'm a, you know, if there's a problem, I want to fix it. Obviously, grieving is about feeling it too. But it's very much a process of working through those emotions. Okay, so I'm not entirely familiar with reviewing a book or things like that so I'm new to this so I'm, I wasn't really sure about how to structure a book review but I'm just going to go through a, I was as I was reading I was writing down certain points or things that stood out to me or irked me or that I did agree with or that I didn't so I had like I had a list of pros and cons so I'm going to go through those things now and then 
I'll give you a summary of what I thought. Okay, so the very first issue I found with this book was very early on and I almost didn't read this book. I almost put it down. Uh, it, it's very much against my whole philosophy on life. So um, it was difficult to move past this page too. So if you open up this book, and this is chapter one here, like before you even get, before that even, before you get to chapter one, it's this warning here, right? I'm going to read this out to you. And this is what nearly made me just go, nah, it's not happening. So warning, this book is not intended as a teaching manual. So we alert you to avoid the temptation of thinking that reading this book or taking the actions in it prepares you to help others. We offer very specific grief recovery certification programs for that purpose. At the back of this book are addresses and phone numbers to use in contacting us for more information about all of our programs. So <laughs> that might not seem like a big thing to you, but for me who reads a lot and share, I share everything I read. I couldn't wait to share. Before I opened this book, I was like, I'm going to get something significant from this book and I cannot wait to share it with my friends because that's, we, we do all learn things along our journey and share them with other people. This book is suggesting that I don't share the information in this book and things that I've gained from this book with anybody else because I'm probably not going to do it right or as well as they would. So they want me to give them a copy of their book. I, I just thought, I didn't like it. <laughs> I didn't like it at all. Anyway, so moving past that. So that was my first con. So I'm going through my list of cons first because I feel like then it will settle, like it will end better, this video, and it won't be all depressing. So it was going all okay until I got to page 17, which is really not that far <laughs> at all. And it said, here's, take this quiz to find out if you are ready for recovery. And so it's a two question quiz. The first question is, if you fell down and gashed your leg, gashed, did I say gashed or gashed, gashed? If you gashed your leg and blood was pouring out, would you immediately seek medical attention? That's the first question. Question two of this two part quiz is, if circumstances and events conspired to break your heart, would you seek attention immediately or would you just allow yourself to bleed to death emotionally? <laughs> yeah, that's what it says. Yeah, that's a bit dramatic. I feel like grief is dramatic enough without adding to the drama. I read that and I was like, really? That's a bit full on. Like, is that really necessary to over-dramatise death? and loss and grief and probably the most dramatic and horrible feelings that somebody could be feeling is it does it really need the added drama i think not okay so this next one's not really a con so there was a part of the book that said you should never say to somebody god will never give you more than what you can handle and this really it got to me right in the feels because I often say this to people when they're grieving or they've lost or they're going through a really tough time because I absolutely believe that to be true, that God will not give us more of them we can handle and we're all on this journey of growth and development and it's in our darkness and our grief and those horrible dark times, that's where we find our strength and our light on our journey so that our souls can evolve, evolve to become what, what else are we here for if not to evolve spiritually and emotionally and mentally and, you know, why, why are we here then? Anyway, <laughs> but um, yeah, so it was like, don't say that to anybody. And so I was like, oh, well, that I don't agree with that. But then as I read on, so... What they were basically saying is that while that may be your beliefs or that may be true, it isn't helpful. And then I felt really, really crappy about uh, some of the things that I've said to people that while I think they're the right thing to say in a certain situation, 
they're probably not helpful at all. And then I tried to think of the other things that I would say in a situation where somebody was really grieving a loss and I couldn't come up with one helpful thing that I'd ever said to somebody. So um, I found this book quite confronting. <laughs> but nevertheless, I still think that these are things that we need to look at. These are, you know, we don't realise, you know, We've heard other people say them and we think that they're appropriate things to say and they're really not. And this book really goes into those things that we've heard, ideas that we have about grief that come forward and it's just that they're the first things that come to us in those times but they're not necessarily true and they're not necessarily helpful and a lot of them we really need to eliminate. We really need to eliminate some of these ideas. So as I said, this book has you complete various exercises as you work through. It's uh, The second half of the book is a workbook. So when you get to the second half, it 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 says, you know, um, you can work with, it really encourages you to find a grief partner or someone to work through these exercises with. And I think that's a great idea because I really think that gives you the opportunity to be vulnerable with another person. And um, I find... You know, I think that that would be a really positive thing. And it does go over reasons why you should choose a partner. But you don't have to choose a partner. So it says you don't have to choose a partner. You can work alone. And for the purposes of this book review, because I was sort of wanting to rush through it to get um, this book review out, I chose to work alone. Which, you know, they say that's fine. They do encourage you to choose a partner. So then anyway... And then every time they gave me an exercise after that, they would like question my decision to work alone. <laughs> Which was like, uh, what is the reason that you're working alone? Do you think this could be the reason why you chose to work alone? Well, and it just keeps like berating you about making that choice to work alone. <laughs> so I found that really frustrating and annoying because it's like, was it really an option then? Or now you're just making me feel like it wasn't the best option. Like I could have done better. I could have made a better choice and chosen to work with a partner. So if you do choose to do this alone, uh, it's going to – it's – expect to be uh, prodded about why the reasons – why, you know, it wants you to bring up the emotions attached to the reason why that you've decided to work alone and – you know, it wants to know why. Why couldn't you just choose a partner? <laughs> yeah, so that's one thing. So that's another thing that got my goat about this book. Okay, another thing that I really found difficult. Now, I am, am I'm an optimist. And I absolutely believe that the things that we focus on create our reality. And if I focus on positivity, I am positive. I do not get affected by negative. I have a gratitude practice. I write down every single day in my gratitude journal the things that I am thankful for. And I, I will spot something I'm I will spot something that I'm grateful for a mile away. I always see the positives in every situation because I'm in the practice of recording each amazing thing that happens to me. If I was, if I had a practice where I wrote down all of the negative things that happened, it would be easier for me to spot the negative things. Anyway, I don't focus on negative things. I, I obviously negative things come up and I try to just uh, experience them for just a minute and then I just let it go. And I don't focus on those things because it's counterproductive to my day and my world and my life and my productivity to be focusing on these negative crap. So one of the exercises says, create a timeline of every loss that you have ever experienced throughout your lifetime. This to me is counterproductive and it goes against everything that I believe to be what makes me a positive and happy person 99.9% .9 of the time. I mean, I have sad days too and just recently things have come up and that's why you haven't seen a video from me in a little while. Um, I've been affected by suicide in the last couple of weeks. 
and some negative stuff going on around me. And, you know, we do still need to take that time to, um, to heal and accept what's happened and learn how to move forward without these people in our lives. And it comes as a bit of shock. We need to do the work. Obviously, I've been reading this. I've been doing the work. But um, for the most part, I'm really happy. And my gratitude practice is so much responsible for that. I recommend everybody have everybody should have a gratitude practice. If you write down all of the things that you are grateful for all of the every day, just do it for a month. A month, they say 21 days it takes to form a new habit. If you can write down all the things that you are grateful for for 21 days or 30, we'll say a month because that's a better number. If you could do that for a month, then you're in the practice of doing that. You're in the practice of looking for those things. Because at the end of the day, in the beginning, it's difficult. It's like, oh, well, I don't know. I guess I'm grateful for this. What else happened today? And then after about a week, you start looking for those things. You Anyway, I'm getting off track. <laughs> Get a gratitude journal. <laughs> okay, so where I was going with that is that I don't want to focus on the negativity. I don't want to focus on the loss. I don't want to focus on the hurt. I don't want to focus on the resentments. I don't want to focus on all of that crap when I could just... Focus on the good and the beautiful and the beauty and and all the lovely, warm, gooey, fuzzy feelings that I get throughout my day because they far, far outweigh the negativity, but we tend to get focused on that. So I reluctantly did this exercise for you guys and you can't, after reading forward, you can't skip this exercise. This is part of it. You've got to do it. You've got to do the yuck. And I think that that's something that I learned from this book is that you've got to go through it. You can't scoot around it. You can't do a little gypsy scoot to the side and go, oh, I don't like that. That's yucky. That's all negative. I don't like that. I'm like unicorns and rainbows and, you know, whatever. You can't do that. you got to do it. It's so funny me saying that right now because I'm literally going through a list of cons about this book and things I didn't like and I, I'm i not liking that I'm focusing on the negativity. So I'm just going to switch it up and go to some of the pros because, like I said, I don't like to focus on the negative things. I like to focus on the positives. So I'm going to move on to some of the things that stood out to me in this book and made me go, hmm, right, and what I got from this book, why you should read it. One of the major wow moments for me in this book I've lost some people in some pretty tragic circumstances, unexpected deaths, things like um, horrific accidents and you're not expecting it and or even just uh, illness, you know, to watch somebody go through that and, you know, my dad, he was very, very sick and, you know, you're slowly watching this person become just like a shell of themselves. And it's not just the physical, it's it's everything about them depletes and they're in so much pain. And anyway, <laughs> focusing on the negatives, but, you know, um, so one of the, one of the passages in this, one of the messages in this book is, it says, if you had lost this person, if you had lost this person in different circumstances, would you miss them any less? And that was a real wow moment for me because I've lost, uh, uh, you know, my pop committed suicide just recently. I had a friend like a week ago, had a friend commit suicide and it's very, you know, it, it doesn't seem fair and, you know, I wouldn't miss them any less if they had left you know, in different circumstances. So it's really non-productive to focus on how they left and the circumstances surrounding that. It's really not productive productive in our recovery um, to move past it. So that was a big thing for me. I was like, wow, that I'm going to keep that one. I'm going to put that under my hat for the future because that's going to help me. That's going to help me in tragedies i mean we're all and this is another thing too right we're all affected by death this was another thing in this book that i haven't written down we're all affected by death all of us are going to lose somebody or something throughout our life it's not it's not exclusive to certain people we will all experience the trauma of losing people that we love now why don't they like nobody knows how to deal with it 
Why is that? Why is it that nobody knows how to deal with this stuff? Why don't we learn this stuff in schools? What? Why is that not a thing? I, I just feel like this should be something that's grief and death and it's something we don't talk about. We need to talk about it. This needs to be a thing that we do, that we can talk about, that we can share for it, for it with each other. It seems like it's something that people feel like they have to do alone. But then why? Because we've all been through it or we're all going to go through it at some point. And we can all learn from each other's experiences. And sharing your grief is halving your or minimizing your grief. Once it's shared, a pre problem shared, a problem halved or whatever it is, whatever that thing is that's trying to trigger in my brain, it's not right now. It's, you know, I feel like there needs to be more, more awareness and things around grief and how we deal with it. So another thing that I touched on before, I had it as a negative, but it's sort of more a positive, is that there's lots of things that I've developed from childhood that I actually choose to believe, that I believe are true about grief, that they're really not. And this book really breaks those things down and has, has you go into it deeper and realise that these are just things that we say to comfort each other, but they're really not comforting at all. And I think it's really important um, I think everyone at this point, when we got to this point in the book, I think everybody should read this book, regardless of if you're grieving a loss or not. But keep watching because I just want to give a warning. Okay, so the reason I picked up this book is because I recently lost my dad. That's why I've been drawn to this book. That's why I thought it might be helpful. Um, now, one of the things that people kept saying to me, everybody, you know, people want to sympathize. People want to sympathize with where you are. They want to put themselves in your shoes. And if they have lost a parent, then that brings them back to that time when they lost their dad, you know, and people were constantly saying to me, I know how you feel. I lost my dad too. And I, I know where they're coming from. I know that um, they have been through tremendous pain if they have lost a parent. But they didn't, they don't know how I feel because they didn't lose my dad. And they don't have the same experiences that I have with my dad. So my dad and I had a very difficult relationship and there was lots of, there was times when I had to have nothing to do with my dad. I had to cut my dad off completely. I wouldn't allow him to see my children. Um, my dad was an alcoholic and he wasn't an alcoholic when he passed. So we had the opportunity to mend that relationship. But there was a lot of things once he had passed that I was still holding on to thinking maybe I shouldn't have done this. And, you know, like, I had to do what was right for my family and my children and myself. But um, when people said to me, I know how you feel, I've lost my dad, I could completely understand where they're coming from and where that comes from and they're trying to be helpful and they're trying to make me feel like I'm not alone and we all experience loss and... But that wasn't helpful to me because I kept thinking, you don't, you haven't lost my dad. You haven't been where I've been. You haven't experienced what I've experienced with my dad. The trauma, the love, like, you know, the good and the bad. You know, every relationship's unique and different. Anyway, where I'm getting at, do not, it, I, I get, you know, we say, we say these things to try and be helpful to other people and to try and identify with their trauma and make them feel less alone. But that's not always how that comes across. And I really, res I really resonated with that because I really would get, you know, like I, I understood, but I would get irked when people would constantly say, oh, I've lost my dad. I know how you feel. I lost my dad last year and I know how you feel. We don't. We don't know how anybody feels. We haven't experienced what they've experienced. We all have different perspectives and I'm moving on to the next point. <laughs> this book, <laughs> this book has a lot of focus on forgiveness. Now, I love that because I feel like we really need to work on that. And I don't, I feel like most of my forgiveness that I had 
or unfinished, unfinished business that I had with my dad, I did get the opportunity to work through that with him before he passed. So even though a lot of it was unspoken, it didn't need to be because it was, we, we had moved past it. And however, there are people in my life that I haven't forgiven. And I found this forgiveness is such an amazing gift that we can give to ourselves, not to the people that have hurt us, but to ourselves. And I really feel like we need to focus on forgiveness always. There's always, we shouldn't hold on to resentments and hurt and betrayals. We shouldn't hold on to any of that because it affects us all negatively. And a lot of that is where all our pain and resentments come from in our lives. So um, I really, this book goes over it well. Also, another great thing I found in this book is that it focused on, uh, it had a section at the end which was called Clean Up. And um, so this was talking about, I didn't really have to deal with this when my dad passed so much. It was more on my mother. But um, like disposing of their belongings and going through their belongings. And so I think that's really helpful, uh, you know, to have those things included in there. Also um, switching accounts and bank accounts and closing accounts and things like that that might have be attached to that person or have their name. It goes over that. Um, anniversaries, how to deal with anniversaries of the person's birthday, death, whatever. Um, you know, wedding anniversaries, those sort of things can be difficult coming up. Um, another really interesting thing. I don't even know whether to conclude this, but I will. Okay, so, um, so it talked about celebrity deaths. And I've had this happen to me where, so, oh, where is this? Okay, sorry. So just had to go and get something. So, um... So I had this happen to me and I felt like a total crazy person. So um, in 2015, Dr. Wayne Dyer, I don't know if you've heard of him. He's an author, spiritual teacher. And he, I've, his books have changed my perspective on things and they've had such an incredible impact on me. When he, he passed away in 2015, I was devastated. I was grieving the loss of this man and people do it with like musicians, people like that who have touched them in this lifetime and that's a thing. It's a, it's definitely a thing. Princess Diana, when Princess Diana died, like, you know, people just went crazy in mourning and they never even knew her. Like, she was just a celebrity. Like, I mean, obviously she was more than just a celebrity, but you know what I mean? Like they don't have a personal connection with them. That person does not know who they are. So again, in 2017, this woman, Louise Hay, she passed away in 2017. I bawled my eyes out. There's been people in my life where I have lost them and not had such an emotional response as I did losing Louise Hay. She's had such an incredible impact on me in her work. She's an author as well, a spiritual author. She, her work has touched me in such a way that I feel like she lives on in me, within me. Her teachings live on within me. And that's totally a thing. So if you have it put in the comments, if you've been if you have been affected by a celebrity death, I want to know about it. Please put that in the comments because that is intriguing to me because I've never really thought about that and I thought I was a crazy person, but apparently I'm not a crazy person and it is a thing. It is a thing. It's even mentioned in this book. If it's in this book, it's a thing. <laughs> Finally, I want to touch on the warning of this book. This book is about loss and grief of loss of loved ones. Yes. It is also a book about loss of faith. Touches on that sort of thing. When you lose faith, in your religion, when, when you lose your faith in whatever it is that you believe in. Loss of career, loss of health for those of you who have health issues and you're grieving the loss of the vibrant health that you used to have, being able to walk, being, you know, um, being able to communicate, um, see people's sight. That's a loss. That's a massive loss. It goes over all these things. So all of the steps in this book, they prepare you for how, how to write a final letter so to this person that you have lost that you're grieving and it's fantastic like the way that it's done 
it's fantastic. It's really is effective. I really, really recommend you get this book and you work through all of the chapters. However, when I picked up this book, I was prepared to grieve the loss of my dad, to close that chapter, to move forward from that, from our crazy relationship that we've had ever since I was very young, and to just be able to heal heal and mend and move forward what I was not expecting from this book was to bring up serious trauma from throughout my life I'm not talking about childhood tra trauma or anything to do with my dad but things that have happened to me or one thing one thing that happened to me um, as an adult that I was not prepared to deal with. I wasn't prepared to have that come up in this book. This book does have a section on uh, PTSD or trauma, um, things that may have happened to you that are completely out of your control. Um, <laughs> I don't know where to go with this. My son watches this channel, so... Um, uh, Okay, so, okay, let me just say, right, I'm just reading my notes <laughs> because I, I don't know how to word this even. So, um, okay, so this book's about loss. So I found myself uh, down a unraveling loss associated with a loss of myself. A loss of my innocence. This um, this thing that happened to me, this trauma from my past, um, it's made me very tough. And I do not trust and I do not trust strangers and I do not let people in. Um, but most of all, I lost a trust for myself. I had always, before this event, I had always thought of myself as... Um, able to handle myself in a scary situation and able to protect myself. This person, a person, took that from me and that then I began to doubt myself, doubt my own strength, doubt that I was able to protect myself in a dangerous situation, doubt that I had the strength. I couldn't even protect myself, so then it comes back into... I feel it with my children, you know, like, can I even protect them? If something was to go wrong, it's my job to protect them. Could I even do that? Because in this situation that happened in my past, I was completely helpless and I couldn't do anything apart from allow this thing to happen. So <laughs> I wasn't prepared to deal with that. So that brought all of this stuff up. Um, it brought up, it brought all of this stuff up, brought up things, it brought up, I wasn't, pre it brought up stuff I wasn't prepared to deal with. So, um, I, I'm thankful now having read this book I'm thankful that this happened but if you have a serious trauma uh, that you might not want to go into be prepared that this book will bring that out it's all about healing it's all about moving forward this book is fantastic I have written a letter to my father and I feel tremendously good about that and I will Proceed to write a letter to the person who affected me in a traumatic way. And I look forward to being able to do that and release that because that's something I carry with me. And I practice forgiveness in my everyday life, but I have not been able to forgive this particular person. Okay, so something that I want to do, every single book that I read is for my own growth and development um, whether it be physically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally. And 
um, I try and take something forward from each book that I read and so I really want to highlight at the end of each review what I'm going to take forward with me, what I've learned or what message was refreshed. You know, I may have already known it but okay so three things that I learned from this book. Number one is that there is unfinished business in relationships. If, if one person dies then that doesn't mean that that unfinished business cannot be healed. You are the person carrying, the person left is the person carrying that unfinished business. The other person's left. Um, you carry that person in your memories, in your heart, you carry that person forward. So it's your responsibility to continue to work on that relationship. That person may be gone, but you don't stop that relationship with that person. You don't stop, you don't stop loving that person just because they're gone. So it's your responsibility to do the work and that's why I highly recommend this book to everyone. I think everybody should read it. Um, two, number two, the second thing, the second thing that I've learned from this book is this wasn't necessarily in the book but I did, it was a strong theme that kept coming to my mind throughout reading it. There's people in this world that I have not healed relationships with and it is far easier to do the work with that other person here. If you have troubled relationships, whether it be past lovers, um, family members, you need, like, I encourage you to do the work now so that you don't have to do it later because in the end you'll be carrying, if they leave this earth before you get an opportunity to do that, it's going to be more difficult for you to move forward and not carry hurt, pain, resentment, anger, and as well, you you know, things that you might have done. Not just things that they've done, but things that happen on both sides. Things aren't all just one-sided. So there's that. <laughs> Number three, if you have children around, earmuffs. Deal with your shit. Deal with your shit. This has been a common theme in my life. When that thing happened to me, I didn't deal with it then. I pretended like it never happened. Like me, I like to focus on the pos positives, not on the negatives. The scars healed. The physical, the physical scars healed. The emotional ones I ignored. And that person came back into my life like you would not believe. I had never met that person. Now, that person is a prominent person in my life. And <clears throat> over no control of mine. Um, so... You need to deal with it or that will come up. I was reading this book. I still hadn't dealt with it. And that's what came up. It will keep resurfacing until you deal with it. If you have trauma, deal with it. Do the work. Love you. I'll see you in the next one. Hey, I'm Percy. Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe and mommy's channel. Share with your friends. Bye.